The story of the golden calf is very difficult to understand for many reasons. Um, the absence of Moshe when he went up to Mount Sinai to receive the Torah from God induced a great panic in the people. And they thought they had lost Moshe and they needed something else to serve as an intermediary between them and God. It's very difficult to understand and uh, Hashem condemned it in a very serious way. In fact, he told Moshe to go down because the, the people had become corrupted. Apparently they had become steeped in Egypt and the idolatrous systems of the Egyptians and it was very hard for them to free themselves from that. So this was so serious that Hashem said to Moshe that he was going to basically destroy them and start a new nation from Moshe and his descendants. However, Moshe had a tremendous dedication to the Jews and uh, it bothered him very much that this nation that he had shepherded and brought out of Egypt, that they would be destroyed. So he, he had no interest in receiving the honor of uh, a new nation coming from him. So he proceeded to pray to God. It's very interesting to study the content of that prayer and uh, to try and understand it. His first argument, it was not just a prayer, please don't do that, but it had ideas. It was, so to speak, an argument. And the argument was that the, why should Mitzrayim, why should the Egyptians say that God basically couldn't fulfill the mission? That the reason when they'll see that the Jews were destroyed, the, the Egyptians wouldn't say it's because the Jews worshipped idols and they deserved it. Rather, they would say that there was some kind of flaw in God. And uh, uh, he, he wanted to take them out. He wanted to bring them into the land, but he, he failed, so to speak. And, and therefore... God should not do this because the question, of course, is what, what difference does it make what Egypt will say? Why should that be a factor? The factor which determines how God will act. If the Jews deserve to be destroyed, then that's what God should do. The second reason he gives is that um, God should remember the oath, that God took oaths to the patriarchs, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and uh he had to keep those oaths, and of course, if he destroys the Jews and starts a new nation, so those oaths will go unfulfilled. Let's see if we can understand the deeper idea behind these arguments. The first question we had was, what difference does it make what somebody else is going to say, especially Egypt, who were their tormentors? So the idea is that it is important what Egypt, and it's not just Egypt, Egypt is mentioned, but it, it represents the nations of the world. Because God is not interested only in the Jews. God is interested in all of his creations. And I think it's a very important point that needs to remember, be remembered because sometimes we think the Jews are the chosen people. That's all that God really, it's not the case. The Jews are the chosen people to receive the Torah and to be the educators of mankind in the basic ideas and the morality of the Torah. That's the ultimate goal. So in order for that to happen, God, God has to be perceived in the eyes of the world as being a just God, a compassionate God. But if God does certain things and acts in such a strange way, then the people will not be able to reconcile that with their concept of a uh, all-knowing and uh, all-capable deity that they should worship as well. So therefore, don't do this because, in a sense, if you do this, it's kind of like a desecration of your name. And the, the Moshe thereby affirmed the absolute commitment to keep the Torah and do the mitzvahs in a manner that will bring credit, that will bring the nations of the world to want to uh, follow God and, and to keep his moral laws. The second argument has to do with the nature of the Jews, that part of our identity, our very identity is that we are the B'nai, uh, we are the children of Abra, Abraham, Yitzhak, and ya Yaakov. That should be our identification. And Moshe was sort of saying that if a nation which is founded on a very firm foundation, if when troubles emerge, it can't stand before you, how much more so a new nation will not have such a strong foundation? It's just one person. It'll be just me. It'll be just Moshe. What about all the history of what Abraham did and what Isaac did and Jacob and then the, the descendants and what Yosef did in Mitzrayim? All this is part of our heritage. And all of this has an impact upon us throughout history. So these are the things we have to remember. 
We have to remember our past, where we come from, the various role models. That they, I don't think any other people has so many role models over the centuries. And we also have to remember that our goal in all of our behaviors and actions is to sanctify the name of God in front of fellow Jews and in front of the nations. So the nations of the world will say what are wise and discerning people, and they too will want to follow the ways of the creator of the universe.